Okay, question number two from practice paper A for the new IAL P2 Pure Maths 2 paper. Um, this is again one of those uh, newer topics. Use a counter example to show that the following statement is false. n squared minus n minus 1 is a prime number for values of n between minus 3 and 10. Okay, so of course uh, prime numbers are whole numbers so n has to be a, a whole number for it to end up being a whole number so uh, basically we have to show by counterexample means we have to choose one value that proves this to be false so for example we could we could try uh, let's start, start with n equals 3 let's start with n equals 3 and see what that gives us so when n equals 3 you're going to have 3 squared minus 3 minus 1, which is 9 minus 3, which is 6 minus 1, which is 5. So this is actually a prime. Okay, so that didn't prove it false. Um, N equals 4, for example, you're going to have 4 squared minus 4 minus 1. That's going to give you 16 minus 4, which is 12 minus 1, which is 11, which is also prime. So that didn't prove it false. Uh, we can go, carry on. Um, 5, we can do it in our head if you want, 5, 25 minus 5 minus 19, that's prime, 36 minus 6 is going to be 30 minus 1, 29, that's prime, 7, 49 minus 7, 42 minus 141, which is also prime, 8, 64 minus 8 is 56 minus 155, okay, so n equals 8, you're going to get 8 squared minus 8 minus 1, which gives you 64, uh, minus 8 which is uh, 56 minus 1 which is 55 and this is not prime why is 55 not prime okay because 55 is equal to 5 times 11 okay and also 55 is equal to 55 times 1 so 55 isn't prime okay as isn't prime let me just move this up a bit. 55 isn't prime. Make this neater. Isn't prime as it has um, more than two factors. More than two factors. Okay. A prime number has to have exactly two factors, no more and no less. So normally it's one and that number, but there you got five and eleven as well. So therefore, okay, we can show that n equals eight, okay, is a counter example. Counter example. Okay, so we can say that um, the statement n squared uh, which shows you should write like a statement of your conclusion which shows that the statement which shows that the statement which shows that the statement that n squared minus n minus 1 is prime for all values of n between 3 and what was it between 3 and 10 is false sorry about my bad writing here is false Okay, so n equals 8 is a counterexample which shows that the statement n squared minus n minus 1 is prime for all values of n between 3 and 10 is false. Okay, and we've the important thing here is to choose a few values. Okay, don't just go straight to n equals 8. Show that you tried a few values. And then once you found the one that's a counterexample, okay, prove that it's a counterexample. So you have to give some idea why it's a counterexample. Why is 55 not prime? So... I mentioned that 5 isn't prime as it has more than two factors. So 55 isn't prime as it has more than two factors. And then you put your statement of your conclusion that n equals 8 is a counterexample which shows that the statement n squared minus n is prime for all n between 3 and 10 is false. Okay, something like that will get you these marks for, these, for this question. 
Okay, um, and now the next part of this question, which is part two, says prove that the following statement is always true. The difference between the cube and the square of an odd number is even. So, for example, 5 cubed, 125, minus 5 squared, 25 equals 100 is even. So we're going to prove it that the statement is always true for every single value, okay, for every single case. So what we need to do is, we need to think about the odd numbers, and how can we include all the odd numbers that exist? Okay, so if we say, um, let... Um, <clears throat> n equals 2k plus 1, okay, then this means n is always um, odd. And that we have to also put a uh, condition that k is an element of the nat of the uh, of the integers. Okay, k is an element of the integers because the integers gives is given by the symbol z. Okay, so k is an integer. Okay, it means it's a whole number, positive or negative. Because remember, odd and even numbers can be negative and positive as well. So I want to prove it for all possible values. So n, if n equals 2k plus 1 and k is an element of the integers, then n is always odd because you're going to multiply an integer by 2, you're going to get even number. When you add 1 to it, it's going to become odd. So even if k is 0, you have n equals 1, um, k equals 2, you're going to have n equals um, when k equals 1, you're going to have n equals 3, k equals uh, 3, you're going to have n equals 7, and so on. If k was minus 1, you're going to have um, n equals minus 1, and so on. So every single case, for as long as k is an integer, 2k plus 1 will always m make that number n as an odd number. So basically, if we find the difference between the cube and the square of that odd number, so we got 2k plus 1 cubed, minus 2k plus 1 squared. I want to prove that this is always going to be an odd number. Okay, so we have to prove that this is always going to be an odd number. No, sorry, not an odd number. Um, is always going to be, sorry, an even number. An even number. So we've got to prove that that will always be even. Okay, that's what we have to prove. So we have to prove that this... this uh, Expression here will always be an even number when k is an integer. So we could expand these two brackets and then simplify them and then try to make them so that you can have two as a factor of them and that way you will prove that it's even. But to make life easier, there's a nice way we could actually use some sort of factorizing. So you've got the same thing, 2k plus 1 cubed and minus 2k plus 1 squared. It's like saying if you had, say, x cubed, minus x squared. How would you factorize that? You'll take out the highest factor, which is x squared, and then you'll have x minus 1. That gives you x cubed minus x squared. So I could do a similar kind of thing for here, but as that, that whole bracket is common. So I can say 2k plus 1 squared is what's common between these two. And then I can say 2k plus 1 minus 1. If I expanded this, I'm going to get 2k plus 1 cubed minus 2k plus 1 squared. So I end up with something like this. You've got 2k plus 1 squared times um, 2k. Times 2k. So that is 2k times 2k plus 1 squared. I mean, that basically proves it because this is going to be um, k times 2k plus 1 squared is going to be an integer. And then you're going to multiply that integer by 2. So it's going to become even. But if you just to make it a bit clearer, you can just expand this bracket if you wish to. So that's going to give you 4k squared plus 4k plus 1. And when you expand it fully, you can you can multiply k in there. You have 2 times 4k cubed plus 4k squared plus 1. So you have this Okay, is going to be integer because k is an integer. Okay, this is going to be an integer. All right, and this is two times an integer. So, as two multiplied, okay, by an integer. 
is always even always even therefore the we could write the statement down the difference between the cube therefore the difference between the cube the difference the difference between sorry about my writing again the difference between the cube and the square of an odd number will always will always be even okay there we have it that's the answer to that question okay so that's a typical type of question where you've got to show like if you said you got to show that something is a multiple of always a multiple of three you end up saying three times something or a multiple of four four times something or an even number three times uh, two times something an odd number two times something plus one okay so that's how you can end up showing things uh, which need to be shown in this kind of question so first you start off by starting off by making the number um, odd because it said the cube and square of an odd number so we made the number be 2k plus 1 that's always going to be odd for whatever integer you put into there so we state that, that k is an integer and we show that 2k plus 1 we, we know that's always going to be odd so we use that as our expression we cube it and take away the square of it and as I said we would have got to the same answer here if we expanded this by doing 2k plus 1 times 2k plus 1 times 2k plus 1 and minus 2k plus 1 times 2k plus 1 but that's going to take a lot more effort than doing this this is much easier um, to do it in this particular method so there we have the answer to that question